It's very interesting to hear a lot of um, academic models that I didn't know of because I don't have that background. We have moved from a very nice, clear, linear model that most people like to rely on. But when we as practitioners look at it, we realize it's slightly more complex than we might have thought with. If you were involved in a crisis, if you're studying a crisis, uh, if you're uh, working on that from a scientific point of view, try to get the most lessons out of every crisis as possible because we need to build as much expertise as possible. And you actually learn the complex interactive processes that led to the event, the web of contribution, then you can make some real progress. It's a unique opportunity to share, in fact, knowledge from the different fields of expertise. And I think this makes CIP quite unique. You can really um, share knowledge between different disciplines. It's no longer about lone hackers. It's not about individuals. It's about groups. And those groups are targeting your organizations because it's a high enterprise business. One of the things that you say about coordination is we should help each other if it's possible and if it's not possible we should at least not be in the way of each other when we do our crisis management and crisis communications work. It's very complicated because when we talk about risk communication all of you create ideas about your own interests. We hear a little kind of different uh, points of view from different kind of industries as well from the academical point of view as from the guys who work with it, the practical guys. We start with one idea, it's that all models are wrong, but some are useful. We don't want to base everything on models, but models can be helpful. There are three parts to every crisis. There's the context. That's everything that led up to the consequence. That's the bad outcome, the unwanted outcome. And then there's the retrospective way we manage that crisis after it happens. Context, consequence, retrospective. In your opinion, which one of these three is least interesting? There are a lot of developments, a lot of new insights about our profession, and it's very, very valuable to share these new insights together. On the 22nd of March, the mobile network was down. So social media became a very important source of information, also for the media. In a rapid changing world, I think this is vital to keep track of uh, the latest developments. And a lot of people do their, their crisis management often, as we say in English, by the seat of their pants. And if you go looking for the book that tells you how to do it, it is not yet written. I know why I'm here, because I've come to learn. We commented uh, CAP is it's a philosophy, it's, it's, it's not a program, it's not a, a rigid structure, it's more a, a way of see the whole picture. Now for me, it's particularly interesting um, to put a little bit more work into the SIP framework itself, to gain more insights into the processes, how to influence uh, certain concepts. I would like to become an innovation hub. Uh, everything is in place. We have the framework, we have the people, we have the interest. Do we really want to believe in our fellow human beings as problems that need controlling? Do we want to organize our field around a vocabulary of constraints and limitations and procedural compliance and audit? Or do we want to think about our fellow human beings as empowered, as people with resources to think, as people with brains?